I've been doing uh, quite a bit of nitrous oxide the last few months, and uh, I've been doing all these things I never thought I could do, like started working out, started painting. I built a bow out of a stick in the woods, all sorts of crazy shit. These are all things you're doing because you became addicted to nitrous oxide? Hey, man, what's your name? Uh, I prefer you call me the Buddha or Buddha. Buddha, the the famous guy from the, that religion. What's going on? Um, well, uh, I've been doing uh, quite a bit of nitrous oxide the last few months, and uh, you know, I thought I thought I should, you know, stop, and, you know, for because it's really not that great for you or whatever. Uh, but and it's expensive as well. But um. You know, and I was kind of scared because I was having these weird hallucinations and stuff. And I, uh, but I just kept doing it because it feels really good. And then, uh, I, 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 I just like kept pushing myself to that limit where I was having these complete dysphoric hallucinations. And I sort of realized that, you know, there was like a deeper meaning to it and that, I was basically, when I was doing that, I was, like, essentially, like, destroying my ego. Like, I wasn't even a part of my own reality, my own body. Uh, that's, now, nitrous oxide, that's, like, the balloon shit, right? Yeah, it's a gas. Yeah, you fill up balloons with it. What kinds of things were you hallucinating? Oh, all sorts of things. Um, I I was, like, shifting into other entities and seeing like godlike figures and demonic figures and um seeing like the speed of time increase and decrease and shrink to very small sizes and grow very large and become like part of the universe and see stars being born all sorts of crazy shit so anyways i was seeing all this stuff and i was really afraid of it at first and and then you know, I kind of realized what I was seeing was, you know, that my ego was basically like leaving my body temporarily. And um, I don't know, I feel like it's like almost like changing my life because I've had like all these perspective shifts and um, like, you know, I call myself Buddha because that's what people of that re religion or that lifestyle, they... Uh, that's what they believe that that we're not just our body we're a part of everything essentially and uh i've been doing all these things i never thought i could do like started working out started painting i i built a bow out of a stick in the woods i i uh i'm learning spanish all sorts of crazy shit these are all things you're doing because you became addicted to nitrous oxide? Um, well, not really because of the addiction to the nitrous oxide, but because of the visions I had from it, you know. What was it about the visions that you had that caused you to do all these uh, productive things? Um, well, basically, I never thought that my mind was capable of producing those kinds of things, you know, like the things I saw were incredible. Like I never, I never thought it was possible for my mind to like imagine those things basically. So I sort of realized that, you know, my potential is really like limitless. So have you stopped doing nitrous oxide or are you still doing it a lot? Mm, I wouldn't say a lot. I do it maybe once a week. Do you do you money. feel like do you feel like you have it under control? Mm. I mean, it's, it's a matter of perspective, I guess. You know, like some people think it's not really under control if you're doing it at all, right? Yeah, I think I think so. I think that that's a way you could look at it. I mean, do you want to stop doing nitrous oxide? Um, I think I just would like to try to find a way to reach that level of enlightenment 
without it, you know. I've always really felt like, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm going to probably get some heat for this, but whatever. I always have felt like you really, you don't need to go to Peru and do ayahuasca or take a shit ton of mushrooms or an acid or do a bunch of nitrous oxide to, like, have epiphanies that help you improve your life. I don't think that that's necessary. Um, it's a, And it's unfortunate, right? Like, I, I really... I, I the few times I've done mushrooms, uh, I really want like I wanted so badly for there to be a thing I could eat that would improve my life, um, and it's just not true. The only thing that actually improves my life is like fucking doing shit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I guess I guess that uh, like nitrous oxide. And acid and ayahuasca, or whatever. These things, I guess these things can be like catalysts that inspire you to do shit to change your life. But at the end of the day, they, they don't actually do anything for you. It's the actual things that you're doing, the learning Spanish, the fucking all the other things you said that are actually improving your life. And then those things have nothing to do with the nitrous oxide. They're just you making decisions to make your life better. Right, but I feel like when I shatter my ego like that, it's easier to make decisions like that. So if your ego is shattered already, why do you feel like you well, need to keep... Well, it's only shattered in those moments. And then well, if I can if... literally see, see my perspective of reality shifting back into focus. What do you mean by it's only shattered in those moments? Well, I mean, those visions only last, like, maybe five seconds at most. That doesn't sound particularly helpful. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's hard to explain, really, you know? It's, I, I feel like the visions are kind of, like, earth-shattering earth in a way because they remove my entire consciousness, you know? Have you ever spoken to a real therapist about any of this? No, I'm trying to... Uh, well, I, I, I basically, I, uh... I, uh... You know, I was trying to get one, but, uh... I called a couple months ago, and they said they would reach back to me when one was available, and they still haven't. Um... I mean, look, man, I think it's great that you're doing things to improve your life. And I, I for whatever it's worth, I, I really don't think that you need to, you know, the nitrous oxide was necessarily a part of it. It's like, um, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of uh, crap. I can't think of an example, but there's like all these cartoons that I can think of where like, you know, someone gets like a magical power and it uh, inspires them to like go save the day. You know what I'm fucking talking about? Mm. But then but then at the end of it's revealed that they actually never had any magical power. It was all just a placebo and it was actually them themselves who saved the day all of their own volition. You know, that's you with nitrous oxide. Right? Like you're the sure. one who's doing all these things to protect to to improve your life. You're the one. Mm. It's not it's and and you can go on Reddit and you can type a whole trip report about how all the you know you took acid and it made you clean your room but at the end of the day you cleaned your room all right it's not this the, i don't don't attribute it to the drug it was you who did it and it, and it is you who can continue to do it sure i just feel like you know without it it's hard for me to have that kind of clarity especially i would say i mean this is probably just an excuse, but my whole life I've had what I would consider to be like very extreme ADHD that manifests in the mind. So mm -hmm. it's very hard to control my thoughts, you know, to have bad impulse control. Brother, if, if, if I were you and, and I really, um, Ah, man, if I were you, man, I would really go out in search of like legitimate professional ways to manage your ADHD 
instead of self-medicating with nitrous oxide. You know, there's, well, I there's mean, drugs you know, that you what can is, take that, that can I mean, help you. But, you know, there's, there's better ways to manage this, is what I'm saying. Well, yeah, but, you know, I took all those drugs when I was a kid, and they didn't really help, you know? I can't. I can't give you anything more than that, man. I really. I really can't. I. I think you gotta. Like. Like you gotta. You. And that, at the end of the day, man. Like you gotta. You gotta want. To. Stop doing this. You know. And if you don't, then there's nothing I can say to you that'll make you stop. Um. But if you, if you want to, then you should go. You know, talk to a professional about how you can manage your ADHD in a way that's not gonna like kill you but give yourself some credit for the self-improvement that you've done on yourself thus far don't don't hand it over to the nitrous oxide the nitrous oxide didn't fucking do anything for you it it was all you who did all the various things in your life that are causing you to improve and i think it will continue to be you who does that um but what the fuck do i know i'm a crazy person in a gecko who accidentally started a, a, a self-help show um, Can I tell you why I like your show? Sure. Well, I think the lizard costume is is very good because the therapist is supposed to be not non judgmental. And how can you be judgmental when you're dressed as a gecko? Right. <laughs> I guess that's true. I guess that's true. <laughs> um, what's your name again? A Buddha. Buddha, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, no, thank you very much, Lyle. I appreciate your call very much and the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you, Buddha. Good luck. And Jesus Christ, stop doing so much nicer oxide. All right. Have a good one, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I don't, know if, I don't know if that was helpful or if that was judgmental or I don't know about any of this shit. I just... Um, I don't know. what. Who am I to tell that guy to stop doing so much nitrous oxide? He can stop doing so much nitrous oxide when I stop eating fucking cosmic brownies and jacking off and smoking weed all day. So, But that didn't, that didn't do anything for me. I don't think it did. I don't think that jacking off and smoking weed and eating cosmic brownies all day improved my life in any way, shape, or form. I don't think that him doing nitrous oxide improved his life in any way, shape, or form. And I believe both of us would probably be happier if we didn't do those things. But I don't know. I don't know anything, dude. I'm freaking out over here. I don't. I just don't know. But um, I'm going to try to know stuff and things. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, how's it going, Lyle? Um, it's going okay, man. It's going okay. How can I get you today, sir? Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if you read the message that I uh, that I put on there, but I used to work at a. Well, I had multiple things, but uh, you know, I've been hearing a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, you know what? Let's make it funny today. Is that all right with you? Go, go ahead. So I used to work at a Papa John's, uh, I want to say about maybe three, no, it's been a longer than that actually, probably like six or seven years ago, and it was fine, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, la la, okay, first customer is an asshole, well, okay, I'll let that one slide, because you know, Customer service, when it comes to delivering pizzas, you know, it's not necessarily all that glorious. But, you know, three, four, five, six times, I had enough of these people because it's in a college town, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm probably never going to see these people ever again. So I'm just going to violate their pizzas. What I mean by that, uh, oh Lord, my best friend told me not to tell it, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, so I violated their pizzas in a way to where I dunked my nuts on them and I gave that special sauce before. Keyword, special sauce. But it wasn't to anybody who was 
uh, kind to me because it was basically to where it was rated if you're nice to us, if you tipped well, but that didn't necessarily factor in. It just added points. But if it was an individual to where they basically mistreated us, you know, demanded their every last cent, then or just being an absolute dick, then yeah, I, I would do that. And my buddy saw me one time, and he's like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'll give you 50 bucks not to say anything. So I actually gave him 100 because he uh, moved out from up north to actually work with me. And uh, he was an online friend at the time, but I met him in real life, and it was amazing. So how much would someone have had to tip you for you to not wipe your balls on their pizza? <laughs> Um, I would have to say like maybe one dollar, but that, it's more like the principle of the matter. I would I would say you know it would fat like if it's like one dollar, then it would equal like ten points for you, you know, within my system, or if even like a penny. But to ask for exact change in a manner is like oh well I need to have my exact change now or something like that, and I'm like sir I apologize, but unfortunately I do not have that. I need to go to the stores. Like, oh, you better do that and give me a free pizza. Yeah, you're getting your, you're getting your uh, dunk nut pizza for sure with extra uh, special sauce. Over the entire time that you worked at that Papa John's, how long did you work at the Papa John's? Uh, approximately between five to eight months. So over the time that you worked at the Papa John's, how many pizzas do you believe that you dunked your nuts on slash came on to? I would have to say an undeterminable amount because... Get, get an estimate. Give me, an, give me a range. All right. Let's say between uh, 50 to about 65. You wiped your nuts on 50 pizzas. Well, I was a delivery driver as well, so I had ample time to do it. Any, I'll just say this much. Anybody could do anything to your pizzas. So it all according to how you treat somebody. Or somebody could just be having a bad day. At least I had a reason to my madness, so to speak. You're like a fucking Batman villain, except you <laughs> jizzes on pizza. Well, thank you. I guess you can call me Mr. Freeze. None of what either of us just said made any sense, but... um, Correct. Okay, so uh, what kinds of things would people... Like, when you say people mistreated you, what would they do? Like, what... I'm very curious. What's the most mild form of mistreatment that you received that you responded to by jizzing on their pizza? Well, it wouldn't be to, you know, the mild version. It'd be like to an extreme. You know, if somebody's having a bad day, you know, I would try to, you know, give a quick talk to because I'm not a horrible person, contrary to what everybody has heard. But, you know, if somebody's going through a bad time, I would try to pay for their pizza, so to speak, because you can tell in somebody's eyes that they were going through something. And some people, you know, I've heard other callers say that, yeah, they just needed somebody to talk to. And, you know, I was that person. But as far as with going to that extreme for what I've done, that's only for extreme measures. It wouldn't be anything mild like, oh, you know, you took so long and blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, that's fine because I've been there. You know, so okay, but 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 you said fifty pizzas. That means that means at least fifty individual people pissed you off so much that you jizzed on their pizza. What did fifty people? What did these fifty people do to you that you felt was so deserving of them fucking eating your cum? Well, the fact that not only I mean to give that number. Uh, it's a college town, and a lot of people love to drink around that area. And there was just some that were belligerent, you know. Um, 
Silver Spoon and Mouth entitled Rich Assholes or the Karen that really has been drinking has been undergoing a bunch of stress and taking it out on somebody else. I have a limit, but it's like far enough to where they've called supervisors, threatened violence on me in the store. I mean, heck, we had one sister property have uh, one individual get robbed and shot in the head because of how severe the situation was. And he was on his way to deliver a pizza. He was at a stoplight, apparently. And that all went down. Do you regret doing any of this seven years later? Um, on a logical, yes. On a psychological, no, not at all. They deserved it, and I served them with a smile right after. What do you do with your life now? Where are, Where is the pizza masturbator seven years later? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, just the way you said that was beautiful. <laughs> um, right now, I am uh, dealing with... Well, right now, I'll just say this. I work at a uh, collision center. But I am dealing with a knee issue that has prevented me from working 100%. Um, I'm going through uh, lawyers in regards to the injury because the company or the uh, uh, insurance adjuster doesn't want to pay for it. So, are you still? I mean, to get all right. If we can get into this for a second, I mean, yeah. Look, ch- ch- chising on people's pizzas is really fucked up. <laughs> it's really fucked up. Why are there, do you? Are you? I I can't. I don't even. Do you? Do you still do fucked up shit like that? Um, no, not at all. Actually, I've been more came since I've been married. Um, it's calmed me down a lot. I used to be you're, more crazier. You're married. How long have you been married for? I've been married. Let's see. I think it's about two, going on two years now. Does she know that you used to jizz on people's pizzas? Oh yeah, my, my best friend uh, basically confirmed it, and, and uh, I told her about it. She said, "That's fucked up. Why would you do that?" The simple answer is because people are assholes. You still really haven't answered my question to the degree that I, I feel satisfied with. Which okay. is, what did these people fucking do to make you want to jizz on their pizza? Like, you, like well, give, me, give me a specific scenario or story. Like, so far, you're just, you're just giving me general answers to this question. All right. So one specific answer would be... Um, I go up to somebody's house. It, it's in the it's in the backwoods, right, of the town that I lived in, and it was hard to get there to begin with because it's all rocky. And the car that I had at the time was kind of uh, it wasn't the best in the world, but it was um, you know motor transportation. Go knocking on their door. They have this scowl look that just made you want to go. Oh God, why? And I, you know, I didn't you have can't j- I, you can't jizz on someone's pizza because they look mean. No, no, no. I, I understand that, but that's why I'm getting to that point. Um, so they basically just after I open the or they open the door, they just start yelling at me, like, "Why the fuck are you take so?" Yeah, it's a lot of explosives. Um, why the fuck did you take so goddamn long, motherfucker? I swear to God, I should shoot you right in the fucking throat right now. I'm like, whoa, whoa okay. Um, I'm sorry that it took this, or you know, it took so long. There was this, this, this going on. He said, I don't give a fuck, asshole. I should beat you up and have my pit bulls rip your throat out right now. I don't give a fuck. I want a goddamn refund. I want this. I want that. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're getting your shit jizzed on. It's so like, wait a minute, but so how did okay? But if you were already at the door with the pizza, how did you then jizz on the pizza? So were you like, were you like, they, hold on, I have a I have more, I have a coupon in my car, I'll be right back. 
Well, he tried to de-escalate the situation by saying, you know, I can see, I can talk to my manager and see, you know, since you're very displeased, if you would like, you know, to have it refunded in any way, shape, or form, or get in contact with them. And so we can do. He's like, yeah, I want to do that, and you better send that pizza back and have somebody else deliver it. And my, they actually called the store, and my manager was there on site and said, hey, just give me the pizza that you have right now. Uh, just take this one. Everything's, you know, been, you know, taken care of. Just go ahead, deliver it, because I don't have any other uh, drivers at that time. And it took me approximately, it could take me about like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. I took an extra like three to, uh, you know, add the Mr. Free sauce. And afterwards, they're Jesus like, well, it's Christ. about damn time. Yeah, you got here later than normal. What the fuck? Oh, and I'm like, yes. oh, I apologize. I hope you have a great rest of your day, whatever you go through. I hope you're able to deal with it better than I could. You have a great day. And I just got in the car, went down the road, had a smile on my face. I'm like, yeah, enjoy the extra happy sauce, too. You got to stop with the cute names for the sauce. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Jesus Christ, man. Um, I was a very fucked up individual and I realized that and that's why I'm like, wow, I definitely need to stop, which I haven't done anything like that ever since. Well, I, I mean, I guess that's good. Um, Jesus I've definitely Christ, changed man. my personality, though, but I and now that I talk about it more, yes, I do regret it. For the simple fact that it's not only a health code violation, but other things as well, and and it, I haven't been caught, but I still feel remorse. You know, years later, contrary to what I said earlier, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, that's I'm not what you. So that's that's, the, that's such a one eighty from what you said <laughs> earlier. Yeah, I know, right? It's like I guess you have to talk it out. I suppose to actually realize what you what you've done. I mean, my best friend even said, like, dude, that's fucked. And he was there with me during that time. You know, he didn't stop me or anything. I guess he's just as much of a villain than I am by uh, association since he knew. But I'm not going to drag him into this, so though. Dude, uh, I, I, I don't know. Do you, do you still order from Papa John's? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, actually. Um, the only reason why, because I actually tip the uh, individual as well. It's like, depending on what my order is, I tip between 10 to $20. The only one I'm able to afford. I still I can't, I really still can't get over the fact that you said 50. Because if you were just, these, here's, here's, I mean, there's a lot of things about this that are disturbing, but here's the <laughs> big thing is to me, um, like, if you told me, if this was like, okay, this person was such a fucking cunt, and they were horrible, and I jizzed on their pizza, I'd be like, that's pretty fucked up. But, I mean, you're telling me, you, you're telling me this happened 50 to 65 times? Like, I are there, say. like, there were really 50 people that were that much of an asshole to you? Uh, yes, and to further prove that, um... If you know anything about uh, Georgia in the central of Georgia, yes. Um. Okay, I have a way that you can redeem yourself. Pray to the Almighty Gek. Uh, no, I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> what can I do? Uh, uh, you, I, I think, I think what you can do is you can jizz on a slice of pizza. No, call your friends. And have him jizz on a slice of pizza, and then eat it. Oh, I can okay, cook it up with uh, pizza. Okay, hmm. You know what, Jack? If that's what it takes to buy your eyes, then the Gek has spoken. I don't like how serious you took. The, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yeah. Um, don't do what I did, uh, and just be kind to your fellow human beings, contrary to Don't, what I did. All right, all right. Okay, bye. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Gary.
That was that was disturbing. Hello. Hello. What is your name? My name is Kai. How can I get you today, Kai? What's going on? So, my life has kind of felt like a matter of setbacks recently. Um, and I'm just like questioning things. And I feel like just talking about it may make me feel a little better. Okay. Where do you want to start? Um, I guess I'll start with like beginning of the year. Um, my dad passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. And thank you. Um, it really threw me out of whack. I will say, um, I wasn't super close with my dad, but it hit me a lot harder than I thought it was going to be affected by it. And at the time I was in school, supposed to be graduating and with his passing I ended up having to put a pause on classes um so ended up delaying my graduation to this fall and on top of that I got into a car accident like two months afterwards so I just I feel like I'm in a matter of setbacks and I just I don't know what to do going forward like, I want to finish college, I know that, but just going forward with life just seems hard because every time it's like two steps forward, one step back, and I'm, I don't really know how to change my luck. I know there's things out of my control, but there's also things in my control that I can change, you know? Can I ask how old you are? Uh, I am 24. Okay. Um. Well... I'm curious. What do you What are you in college for? What do you like? If you were to finish college, what would it be in the field? Of- I would have gotten my BS in biology and my BA in anthropology. Okay, are those things that excite you and interest you that you want to do? A hundred percent. I was actually lined up to go to grad school, but because I delayed my uh, graduation, I got pulled away from that grad school. Okay. Um, what do you want to do? Like, what? I don't really. I guess what kind of jobs are the uh, are at the end of those fields? Or at the so end of those ideally, graduations? it would be something doing medical stuff. But I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I need to reevaluate, and I don't want to disappoint people. But I'm also thinking, like, maybe I don't do grad school and just kind of work on starting my own business like I want to. Ooh. Okay, you said a bunch of interesting things just now. Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's hold on to them. You said, uh, I want to start my own business like I've always wanted to do. You said, I don't want to disappoint people. And you said you want to reevaluate your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's hold on to all three of those. Uh, what do you? What about your life are you reevaluating? The pathway that I'm taking to get to my end goal. So I'll kind of explain my end goal, kind of going back to the business idea. I really like reptiles, and I want to have a tortoise ranch. And I know that sounds really crazy, um, but I want to work in conservation and just educating people on reptiles. Hold on. I thought that turtles were amphibians. <laughs> no, they're reptiles. Okay, I didn't know that. For a reptile, I know very little about reptiles. It's okay. It happens to the best of us. Uh, that sounds beautiful. I love that idea. That's great. That sounds cool. Um, and I'm not even saying that because I'm biased. But uh, all right. So who are you afraid of disappointing and how would you disappoint them? Specifically, my aunt. Um, She's not blood-related to me, but she's the closest relative that I have. Um, She and her mom very much want to see me graduate from grad school. um, Because I've talked about, like, probably since I was little, wanting to go into medicine. Okay, let me stop you right there. Not that this is that important, but it's a little important. Mm -hmm. have Have they funded your college experience at all your mom and your aunt 
Not directly. Um, sometimes they would give me like supplies and stuff, not like textbooks or anything. Just okay. like they but see a but flyer but you're something. you you're the one who's taking on the loans. It's not like because because look, I I, I, I want to say like I want to say college. if your I want to say if your family is like giving you a bunch like they gave you a bunch of money to go, mm-hmm. and you're like I want to drop out. I understand that stress, mm-hmm. but this is like your to art. I'm sorry, I completely cut you off while you were talking. But um, no, you're fine. did you? So you took out the loans to go to school? Yep, I've been putting myself through school since I started. My friend, <laughs> you should do whatever the fuck you want to do, if that's the case. You, I, I, by the way, I would say that even if that wasn't the case, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a little bit harder if that's not the case. But like, so what if your aunt and your mom want you to do something because you were talking about doing it? Since you were little, I frankly think that's a, a, a horrible reason to do something. Yeah. It, it kind of is, but I have disappointment issues in the sense that, like, I feel bad making people feel bad. And I know her aunt. Yeah, would have but loved you can't. Yeah, graduate. but, but, but you, can, you, uh, you really, really can't live your life that way. You really can't. You're gonna actually drive yourself to to insanity if you try to live your life that way. You really yeah. will wanna. It's just because um, you can't control how your mom feels about your own life decisions. Yeah. A, and then B is it's your life, and you mm-hmm. have a cool and you have a cool thing that you want to do. This reptile thing. Okay. All right. What do we? T- all right. The, the three things. Uh, your evaluation. Oh yeah, the business. Okay, so how would you start this business? So first thing first would be to get property. Um, in order to actually do the ranch, I need a property that would be large enough to hold tortoises. Um, because I'm looking at getting giant tortoises specifically. Um, that's pretty cool. How do you? How does one procure giant tortoises? Uh, you can actually just buy them online. Um, I don't recommend just like buying them blindly, but there's a lot of, so to speak, uh, dealers and tortoises online that you can find. There's a guy that I follow who I'm like, basically, I want his life <laughs> when it comes to just tortoise ranching, um, who just sells them for like a couple grand. That's amazing. Um, so, all right, let's talk through this then. What, what is currently between you and, and achieving this goal? Finances, really. Um, just trying to get everything in order. I feel like I need to get the college stuff done first because that's something I still want to do. I don't want to drop out of college. I just not sure if I want to do grad school, but Okay, so, so you haven't you haven't finished your undergrad? No, I'm finishing this semester, so I'm really excited. Oh, all right, so you're almost done. Yeah. Okay, so um, the decision is: Do I want to try to figure out how I'm going to start this tourist ranch versus do I want to go to grad school? Exactly. W- uh, what are the reasons why you would want to go to grad school? Um, I would be able to pay for it a little better than a tortoise ranch. And I would get a bigger return quicker when it comes to finances because I would be almost guaranteed a job out of grad school uh, because part of the process is like shadowing with the organization and nine times out of ten, you get a job at that organization Um, versus like starting a business. I don't really know much about starting a business, if I'm going to be honest. Like I do do like contract work but that's about the basics of stuff that i have for starting a business and especially like buying land and that kind of thing to set up this sort of business is like way beyond what i know if that makes sense um have you done the the math on this of like how much does it cost to go to grad school and how much does it cost to start up this business Grad school would be cheaper, but that also means that I would have to delay even longer 
from starting because this is the end goal is always been to get a ranch. Grad twenty four. I, I I think um, first. Well, I'll say this. First of all, I'm glad that you did. In none of those uh, reasons you gave me, you said anything about your mom and your aunt. I think that's the most important thing here. Mm-hmm. Um, like you, you actually you gave me pretty pretty good solid reasons here. Uh, is there a pathway that involves, okay, I go to grad school, uh, and then I get this job and then I can save up more money to get the capital to make the ranch? Does that exist? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the plan for going to grad school. If I do go, um, I've been thinking if I still want to go to grad school, I might just change which pathway I'm going and maybe go into like veterinary medicine because that makes sense go into veterinary medicine because after i leave working you know a normal nine to five job i can still utilize those skills uh again i really i really i love the uh starting your own business idea uh Mm -hmm. and 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 doing the ranch i i do and i understand that um uh, to me in my head it's like this is just a question of how do you get the money that it was required to upstart exactly and uh, I, I, this is this is all very logical to me. I, I'm not worried about you. Yeah, I mean, I will say that I have people like backing me. Like I have a very loving and supporting boyfriend that is a hundred percent on board with like tortoise ranching with me. We've been together for like ten years, so he he kind of knows that I am like dead serious on it. Um. No, tortoise ranching is there. I want you to know, just if you ever doubt it, I really just want you to know people have had much, much, much stupider dreams than to open a tortoise ranch. That that does make me feel a little better. Yeah. I'm I I I mean, I'm sure you can I could name ten stupider dreams than that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um out of respect to those those people with those stupid dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'm not worried about anything that you said, except for like the, the trying to please your parents and shit. But you, yeah. I, you seem, um, you seem like you have this on a lock. I try to, I, I'm trying to have it figured out. It's just, I hate that it's taking me longer to get to where I want to be because of all these like setbacks and just expectations of people. Well, um, if it makes you feel any better, uh, you should actually... I'm going to say something kind of weird um, that I, I don't even know if I fully believe, but I'm going to try it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should actually enjoy this time that is spent achieving your goal because uh, once you actually do achieve your goal, once you get your tortoise ranch, you might get kind of bored. I hope not. I love tortoises, but I do understand what you're saying, that it's like climbing a mountain and enjoying the view and once you get to the top it's just like oh i did all this for this there we go see you're well no not all this for this i guess i don't yeah i think yeah you know no that's stupid i think when you have a tortoise ranch you'll actually be pretty stoked about that but again but it's in the future it's something to look forward to so Mm -hmm. um yeah again i'm not i'm really i'm really not worried about you you seem like uh if, if I had to place money on whether or not you would eventually start this tortoise ranch, I, I would do it. It's, it's going to happen. I'll make it happen one way or another. It's just a matter of time. Are you going to have any geckos at this ranch or just tortoises? I want to get a giant lizard. Um, not a gecko, but a tegu. What's a tegu? A tegu is a giant lizard. They're from Argentina. Um, they're about the size of like a small to medium dog and they're just they're really cute and friendly like they have a very outgoing personality they eat anything they're like much friendlier than monitor lizards so i will manifest a large argentinian lizard for your future (laughs) thank you uh what is your name again kai kai is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go um, please 
watch for reptiles when you guys drive. Don't run over them. It makes me very sad. I second that. I second that. Some I've gotten um, hit by several cars while walking on the streets. So thank you for your advocacy for me. Of course, of course. Good night, Kai. Good night. Attention listeners of the Therapy Gecko podcast. Did you know that I do a live version of this podcast on stage, in person, in front of real people, and that I'm doing this live show in several cities across the United States and Europe this fall, and that tickets are available right now at therapygeckotour.com or at the link in the episode description? It is all true. I'm currently on my third tour doing Therapy Gecko Live all around the country, and it is the most fun, sick, amazing thing ever, and you should come out and be a part of it. The shows involve a mix of material and presentations from myself, combined with a group gecko therapy session where members of the audience come on stage to share things from their lives in front of a big group of people, just like we do here on the podcast. Whether you're a fan of the podcast or you have no idea what this is and you clicked on it by accident, you're going to have a great time at the live show. Once again, tickets are available right now at therapygeckotour.com or at the link in the episode description. These are really fun shows. They're always wild. They're always unpredictable. And I hope to see you guys there. From Addy. Hello? Hi. Is this Gag? Hi. Yes, who is this? Um, this is Addy. <laughs> What's up, Addy? How can I get you today? How is life? What would you like to talk about on the on the on the thing? Um, life's pretty good right now, I have to say, overall. Um yeah, I don't know. I just I think I might have a cool story about when I had weed induced psychosis <laughs> um, that I could talk about. <laughs> uh, sh- sure, go ahead. Um, so there's a little bit of context, I guess, to kind of like bring the whole situation together um, from about when I was like 16 up until 20. I was like a chronic weed smoker um i was i like started off not smoking too much but it very quickly like especially when i got to college i was smoking every single day um and yeah um i stopped for about three years um and something happened in my life that was um i had a lot going on and i was really stressed out i would definitely say i was addicted to weed (laughs) um and i knew it um And so then I picked up smoking again and yeah, I guess my brain is just not uh, one of those brains that does well with weed because I ended up having uh, a psychotic episode. (laughs) Um, So I basically like, I had never experienced it before. Um, It was basically like I completely lost touch of reality, right? Like I, um, it was so strange, like, I don't know. Um, sorry, my thoughts are all over the place. <laughs> um, but I, I basically took a hit off of a pen that was um, not like <laughs> it wasn't obviously from like a dispensary or anything. And uh, I remember getting into the shower, and at the time, I was really into Florence and the Machine. I still am. I love her. And while I was in the shower, I felt like. I was being spoken to by her, um, like through her music. And also along with this, like context wise, like I used to be super, super religious. Um, I went to like a program to like get into ministry. Like I was super, super religious for a while. Um, And so while I was in the shower, I thought that I was having a, uh, what, like an epiphany um, turns out I was just going into psychosis, didn't know that at the time. Um, and I was like sobbing and I was like, started coming up with like all of these ideas. And like, I saw this vision of like, basically my life, right? Like it started off with just like flowers cooing in a field. And it was like these flashes of images of like different things in my life that like had happened or were going to happen. Um, at least how it felt. Um, And I started like singing along to the music thinking that I was like 
supposed to be calling out <laughs> to other women and trying to like send a message out and at the time like when it first began i thought if this isn't real then nothing will happen but if this is real then i'll get some sort of reaction like from my roommates and stuff because i was living in a dorm um and so i sang for like an hour in the shower just like belting my lungs out and i was super like nervous <laughs> after i, I left can I, I, like, can I i'm real quick real quick because uh, some people <laughs> in the chat are mentioning this are you sure this was not a dmt vape um, I'm almost, I have no idea. Um, I, cause it was from a friend. So like she said it was a weed pen. Nobody else had this reaction. Everyone else was fine. Like she was hitting it and I was hitting it and she didn't have any sort of adverse effects to it. This was just me. Maybe you, maybe you hit uh, the wrong button. Maybe it was like, wait, you know, those markers, you <laughs> yeah. have multiple colors, you know, the markers the you have like multiple colors on. <laughs> You you probably hit, yeah. hit the DMT button on this fucking pen. Um, yeah. But I uh, I yeah that sounds I I God I have no idea. Has, I mean, has that happened to you uh, after the fact? Has that happened to you at any other time smoking weed? Um. So there was like, it's nothing like this. Like I didn't go. So in this case, I completely like lost touch of reality. I thought I was the next messiah for like three days. Um. And I would come in and out of it, but like. For the most part, like, I was walking around thinking that I was, like, a deity on Earth for, like, three days. I'd never experienced that sort of, like, complete loss of touch of from reality. But I did have what I now realize through, like, therapy and talking to doctors, what might have been, like, a manic-induced episode from huh. weed, like, a couple of years prior. So it's all really strange. Like, I, I don't really know how to explain it. Uh, when's the last time you smoked weed? Um, over a year ago now, like, I think almost maybe coming up on two years. Uh, yeah. Maybe like uh, a year and a half, actually. And do you, do you feel, do you, have you had any psychotic episodes since this? No, I haven't, thankfully, no. Are you, are you feeling uh, better? Do, does, does it feel good to be attached to reality or do you sometimes wish you could <laughs> attach a little more? You know, it's a, it's a little strange. It was the most terrifying experience of my life, I will say. Um, I feel very happy to be grounded and attached to reality. Um, I do miss the euphoria, I guess, that I felt. Um, kind of just like the carelessness. And I mean, if you feel like a god, like you feel pretty great. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think I miss the like euphoria that I had felt at the time. But I do not miss the fear that I felt when I was kind of coming down and realizing what was happening because it's scary to lose uh you know control of your mind like that when you said you thought you were the messiah for three days what did that what like what were those thoughts um so the night that it happened was definitely the worst um i i quite literally thought that i was going through a transformation um that was like i was basically taking on all of the sin of the world and like turning into Jesus like I was going to be the next Jesus basically and so I needed to like and I had like some sort of message to like spread to the world about like God and mother nature and stuff so like I I physically like at one point was feeling like the pain of like the world on uh, in my body um and then the next day like after i kind of like what went through quote unquote my like transformation the next day I, this is when i started to kind of come in and out of it where like there were moments where i like was walking around my campus like quite literally thinking like nobody here knows that i'm a god like that i am like a deity and then i would kind of come down a little bit and be like i'm crazy <laughs> and then i'd kind of like flip flop i don't know if that makes sense but what well, if you were a god would you be a benevolent one or were you like uh, or were you walking around like nobody here knows that i'm a god so they better not fuck with me um i you know i think it it's weird to say i think a little bit of both like i was kind of i was super confident and um, most of like i guess what i wanted to do was like like spread love like i'm a very loving person so i think mostly benevolent but there was also a, a side of me that was like no one can fucking touch me and like if they did then you know i'll i'll show them you know have you recently felt at all as though you you might be a god of some kind 
Um, I don't think so. No, I feel very normal. Like, I feel like I'm just your average, you know, person. Well, um, that's good. That's probably healthy. It's probably healthy <laughs> not walking around thinking that you're thinking that you're a god. Um, but I, maybe maybe a little fun for a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for a day, if I could, if I could do it, I think I would do it. Um, just to you know, see what it's like. But I don't. I think that's a lot of responsibility to carry on my shoulders to do it. You know, full time. Um. Listen, anytime you want, you could go into a vol- you could probably go into some form of a voluntary psychosis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's not I don't think that's a good idea to voluntarily go insane because you want to feel like God. Yeah. Yeah, I think if something bad enough happened where in my life where I was like I don't want to be a human anymore maybe that would be like a super you know it'd be a super helpful way to try to just let go but um yeah yeah i don't know (laughs) what's your name again addy is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go addy um yeah tell someone that you love them today tell someone that you love them today um Tell God that you love him today. Yeah. Tell God that you love him. Maybe, maybe he'll love you back. Especially if maybe it's yourself. Stop. Maybe, he'll, maybe he'll stop making all those horrible, horrible things happen to you if you tell him you love hmm. him once in a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Bye, Eddie. Bye. Thanks, Gek. Hello? Hello. What is your name? Wow, it's Alyssa. I can't believe this. I've been watching the stream for years. Well, glad to have you here, Alyssa. Um, it says here that you are concerned you're becoming too much like your mother. <laughs> yes, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I love my mom. She's my best friend. But I just, I don't know. It's kind of uh, having an impact on some of my decisions. I think I messaged you before that saying that I'm thinking about becoming a therapist and my mom's a therapist. So I've always thought I don't want to do that because that's what she does. But now I do want to do it, but I don't know if I should because that's what she does. Does that make sense? Um, It makes sense in theory, but in practice, why do you care? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's just me and my mom are literally the same person. She's, we're both the same personality type. We're both Leos. We're very similar. I love her. She's my role model. But I don't want to... I guess it's a stupid thing. Like, if I, quote, unquote, grew up <laughs> to be like my mom, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Because she's great. <laughs> well, I mean, take your mom out of it. Like, do you want to be a therapist? Yeah, I do. It, I've, I always have, but I've always told myself... I'm not going to do that because that's what my mom does. I don't want to do what my mom does. But it's the only thing that I keep coming back to. Like, I'm so unsatisfied in my job right now. Um, and I'm just, I, I've always told myself, like, maybe when I'm older, somewhere down the road. Um, but it's just the thing I keep coming back to. So I don't know. I, I, I guess that's. Saying it out loud makes me realize it's kind of a silly concern. Um, I mean, yeah, like, it, I mean, point case closed. If you want to be a therapist, then why does it matter if your mom was one? Well, that's true. But also, like, I'm worried. I guess nobody is 100 uh, percent mentally healthy. But, like, I definitely still have my own stuff I'm working out so I guess another part of my concern is like is it you know should I be the person giving people advice when I don't even have my own shit worked out you know Uh, I mean I'm depressed and anxious and completely insane and and for (laughs) some reason people continue to ask me uh, what what they should do with their lives so true but I'm also I'm not a real therapist. I'm a fucking internet right. streamer guy. So, 
Um, right. But I, I don't. I, I look. I, here's my f- final opinion on this. Uh, what's Alyssa? Is that like? It's, it, I, I mean, stop giving yourself reasons not to do a thing that you want to do. There's, and they're not good. They're not yeah. good reasons. Like if you want to do the thing, go do yeah. the thing. Yeah, no, that's a good point. <laughs> it's good to have somebody else tell me that. I just wish so. I I feel so directionless. Like sometimes you just want. Somebody what do you mean to... you feel? Hold on, hold on. What you keep I saying do. these things? What do you mean you feel directionless? You have a direction. You have a thing you're telling me over and over yeah, again that you no, want to do. That's, true. that's the opposite of directionless. Wanna... That's the direction. Okay. Move out of the country. So that's the other part of it. So what? I don't know. I also want to move out of the country. So that's okay. the other part of it. So it's like. I can I can apply to grad school here, but then I'm kind of like locking myself into. I guess I'm not because I could work remotely once I'm licensed. But the other option would be to apply to grad programs outside the country. I just can't decide what route to take. Um, what country do you want to move to? Kind of. I'm very open. Honestly, that's what I'm saying. Like, France is one. Um, I just got back from a trip to France. It was really lovely. I can speak a tiny, tiny bit of French. Uh, maybe the UK. Uh, those would be my top two, I would say. Okay. This all sounds good. I Can I, can I, can I be honest with you? Yeah, please. Um, you, there's no reason to invent reasons why uh you shouldn't go do fun cool exciting things right you're like that's that's what i'm observing is that you're inventing reasons to be scared and happy that don't that don't exist yeah yeah because it's just i guess hard to actually like do the thing you know you just have to decide to just Thing. <laughs> yeah, do the thing. I mean, your mom, the fact that your mom was a therapist, like, so who, like, who cares? That doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Like, if you yeah, want to yeah, do this yeah. thing, we'll go do it. No, you're right. You're totally right. Um, now I just have to figure out where. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, being a therapist in French, that sounds cool. They make that a lot of hard. sad. They, they <laughs> probably would be sad. They make a lot of sad. It probably would be hard. They make a lot of sad black and white. French movies that make people <laughs> very you. sad. So I th- I say France. I think you should go to France because that's okay. probably where the most that's probably where the most depressed people are, and that's where you'll get make the most money <laughs> being a therapist. So do go. To I France. gotta I gotta learn the language a little better than I I do know it already. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? No, I don't think so. Thanks for calling. Thanks for um, thanks for talking to me on the phone anytime (laughs) bye bye